welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia live stream. Our big gatherings are suspended until further notice. Your health and safety is important to us. Bless others by sharing this live stream. Here are some health tips that we all need to follow in order to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Number one, boost your immune system. Number two, practice good personal hygiene. Number three, when in public, protect yourself and others. Social distancing and avoiding crowds are good for you and everyone else. Number four, if you're sick, rest and recover. Stay connected. We encourage our Feast Mall of Asia family to continue our discipleship activities online or via phone calls. Let us continue to be Jesus to each other. Keep track of your sessions by visiting this link or by scanning this QR code. Let's support each other in these trying times. Times may be trying, but you can still be a blessing. Let's continue to support God's work by going digital. Here are the ways that you can give your love offering. Choose between check deposits or bank transfer. Message the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page for more details. For updates and announcements, keep posted through the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page. The Feast Mall of Asia on Instagram. The Feast Mall of Asia hotline. Or via email at info at thefeastmallofasia.com. We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the Master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you.
builders in this place. We don't need to stand here in front. I need you to build the kingdom of God just right where you are. Get nourished here through the feast. Good morning, Feast Mall of Asia. Our Holy Mass will begin in a short while. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Eucharist this second Sunday of Easter. Today, we hear the story of Thomas. Like Thomas, may the Lord open our eyes to the power of the resurrection and transform our doubts and fears into confident faith and boundless joy. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. Promoted by St. Faustina Kowalska, this devotion is a perennial invitation for us to face, with confidence in divine goodness, the difficulties and trials of the present and the future. Our priest presider for this Eucharistic celebration is Rev. Father Bob McConaughey. Let us all rise to greet our celebrant and let us glorify the Lord by singing the entrance song. Sing.
We celebrate today a most beautiful feast, one that Pope John Paul II has given us from St. Faustina. It's called Divine Mercy Sunday, and we'll talk about that a lot during the gospel, during the homily today. In the meantime, we begin our day in this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father and, Bob. And welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia. When it comes to mercy, you know, God is the one that makes the first move. Lost sheep, lost coin, prodigal son. Jesus is showing us that the Father stirs up the grace of repentance in us and simply asks us to open our hearts to that mercy. And so we do that right now. We call to mind our sins and open our hearts to God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of your compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, Christ mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the gentle, good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own increase we pray the grace you have restored that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn 
and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. Luke narrates the transforming effect of Jesus' resurrection on the believers. In the power of the Holy Spirit, the first Christians build up a sharing and worshiping community. The first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial Psalm, let a response be. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks, thanks to the, the Lord, Lord, for He is good. good. His love, His is, love everlasting. is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. Peter encourages us that our faith in the risen Christ fills us with joy and sustains us. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in His great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, by fire may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen Him, you love Him. Even though you do not see Him now yet, believe in Him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel.
My dear feasters, the Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now on the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. And whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Now Thomas, called Didymus, was now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came and although the doors were locked, he stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not in this book. But these are written down that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Now think about this scene for a while. The apostles had been gathered in that upper room in the Senegal for about 52 hours. And they were scared. They were scared that they would be arrested, that they would be identified, and that they would be crucified. So they stayed in that upper room. Imagine what they were feeling during that time. They felt great loss, of course. And of course, they felt great fear. But above all, they felt guilt. Except for John, all of them ran away when Jesus needed them the most. And of course, they felt lost. There was someone they followed for 1,100 days, stayed close to him, and now it was over. Jesus was dead. And then suddenly, without knocking on the door, because they would not have answered it, Jesus in his risen body walks through the door, and what does he say? What would we expect him to say? We would expect him to say, I told you so. I knew that you were going to abandon me. Peter, I told you, didn't I? And the cock crowed three, crowed three times, didn't it, on that last denial? Too bad. You're all fired. I'm going to find 12 apostles that will really be able to build a solid rock of a church for the future. It's been nice. Bye-bye. Yet our God is a God of mercy the God of the unexpected. And what does he say? Does he point to the past? No. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. With all of your weaknesses, with all of your sins, with all of those things that are not very loving, I send you anyway because I'm going to give you a gift that will enable you to have courage again. In fact, most of them would die as martyrs. And what was that gift? The same gift that you and I receive at our baptism and has deepened at our confirmation, the gift that makes us really, truly free, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Usually, when you and I get into an argument with someone and the argument really gets loud, very often, if you're losing that argument, you're going to point to the past. You'll point out to whomever you're arguing and you'll say, well, I remember when you did. Jesus doesn't want us to do that. Never use the past 
as a weapon in the presence. Now today, today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And St. Faustina was a nun, a Polish nun, and she was made a saint, and she reveals some pretty powerfully beautiful things about how Jesus sees you and me. And she said this, Jesus told her, the greater the sinner, the more is he entitled to my mercy. Is that you? Are you the great sinner? You're the one that our Lord wants to shower with an ocean of mercy. And she said on this feast of divine mercy, allow yourself to dive into that ocean. Let it soak you inside and out and don't dry yourself off. Luxuriate in that mercy. Now on the Feast of Divine Mercy, the Sunday after Easter, you and I are invited to receive a great gift of divine mercy. And what do we call that? We call it a plenary indulgence. Now in order to receive a plenary indulgence, you have to do three things. The first thing you must do is you must go to confession. Now, you might say, how do I go to confession? There are no priests available. And the Pope, knowing that, said that during this time of COVID-19, you might want very much to go to confession, especially for the Feast of Divine Mercy. You can do that. You can do that today or tomorrow or the next day. How do you do it? Make a good examination of conscience. Be very specific about the sins that you remember. Feel sorrow for them. And then the Pope said, simply confess them directly to God because there's no priest available. At the moment you confess those specific sins, the Pope told us they are forgiven instantly. And he says you're, you are pure and your soul is totally right at that moment. And then for your penance, you would say, one our Father, one Hail Mary, and one glory be to the Father for the intentions of Pope Francis. You receive communion. Now, you can't receive the Eucharist as we usually do, but today, as you'll see, we receive a spiritual communion. That suffices to be able to get the plenary indulgence. So, you go to confession directly to God. The sins are forgiven. And the Pope encourages us that the next time we go to confession to mention to the priest, I had these sins forgiven when I spoke directly to the Heavenly Father. Let me mention them to you and then tell you all the sins that I've committed since my last confession. This is a beautiful opportunity, especially if you only use the sacrament every now and then to embrace God's mercy and look forward to receiving the grace of that sacrament. Now, the question arises, what is a plenary indulgence? Well, first of all, maybe the best way to explain it is this, that when you and I confess our sins to God, when he forgives us those sins, there is reconciliation. And then we usually do a penance, right? And the penance really is kind of to make up for that sin and also to prepare us to do our loving better. That's what penance is, it's very beautiful. The season of penance is Lent, and that's when we seek to become holier and better persons. So you might say that going to confession and receiving God's forgiveness and being reconciled to God has to do with our eternal life. It affects when we die. But there is another issue that arises. When the church speaks about a plenary indulgence, it says the plenary indulgence takes away all temporal punishment due to sin. Now let me kind of explain that a little bit. Supposing that a group of boys are playing soccer in a yard right near somebody's house, and one of the boys kicks the ball too hard, and it breaks the window the front window of this house and the father comes out and he's a little bit upset oh no you broke my window 
And let's say the boy who kicked the ball owns up to that, and he goes to the man and he says, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it, I broke your window. And then the man says to him, I forgive you. Forget about it. Never happened. So what do we have? We have forgiveness and sorrow. We have reconciliation, but what do we still have? A broken window. The window has to be repaired, doesn't it? That's kind of what we mean by temporal punishment due to sin, because we either repair the damage now or in purgatory later. When you and I sin, there's damage that's done, kind of like the broken window. When we gossip about somebody, for example, our Lord somehow calls us to repair the damage we've done, and that can't always be done, especially if the gossip really, really spreads around. Well, maybe if we don't repair the damage here, when we die, our Lord shows us how that person felt as a result of me starting gossip. So purgatory then is really a place of healing. We often think of purgatory in very, very graphic images that have nothing to do with the teaching of the church. The church has never taught specifically about the sufferings in purgatory. There are images in which Artists have drawn pictures of purgatory with people yelling and screaming in a lake of fire, bobbing up and down like so many french fries at Jollibees and being tortured. That is not purgatory at all. When you and I die, if we do not receive a plenary indulgence, more than likely we will choose to go to purgatory. It's very much like if you went to a five-star hotel you pass by the ballroom and you see people in there dining and dancing and eating and they know you and they love you and they say, come in, join us, we're having a great time and you might not be dressed in formal clothes. You would probably say to them, let me go and change first. That's what purgatory is, going and changing. Because you and I, for the most part, still hold on to our attachment, to the way we think, to some of our sins. We just kind of hold on to it. You might say it's a substitute for what we really need. It's God's love. Brother Bowen in a retreat that he gave last year said that everything fades away and that part of the big challenge in life is to kind of disconnect with everything and be totally open to God. Well, that's kind of what purgatory is. It's detaching from whatever is left over and detaching from any sort of remnants of our sinfulness and there repairing the damage that we've done by our sins. When you get a plenary indulgence today, all of that temporal punishment is entirely taken away. It's very much as if the boy broke the window and came back the next day to pay for it but the man already fixed it and said, don't worry about it. You don't have to repair it. That's kind of what a plenary indulgence is. So that when at the end of our life, we have that plenary indulgence, our Lord shows us our life. He won't include the damage that we've done. It's already repaired by the plenary indulgence. So embrace that. Go to confession in the next few days to our Heavenly Father directly. Receive communion today, a spiritual communion. Say a good act of contrition after you do your penance. And then in our Father, hail Mary, and the glory be to the Father. When you do that, our Lord makes the move and takes away all temporal punishment due to sin. So remember what Faustina said, that Jesus said, the greater the sinner, the more he is entitled to my mercy. Why? Because mercy is always given when it is not deserved. Have a beautiful Divine Mercy Sunday.
Let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting that God is good, that God really does love us, that He forgives us, wants to give us full mercy. So we come before Him now with our prayers for ourselves, for the world, and especially for this crisis that it ends soon. So God, our Heavenly Father, we pray first of all for Pope Francis. He has been such a beautiful example of mercy, especially in these last few weeks. Sustain him, keep him healthy. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we trust in you. Heavenly Father, we ask you also to protect all our bishops, our priests, all those who serve the church in any way, that they might through this period be truly selfless let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father we, we trust, trust in you. Heavenly Father, you know that we pray for our heroes this morning, our front liners. Please don't let any more of them contact this COVID-19 virus. Protect them with the shield of your love and mercy that they might bring us to an end of this crisis soon. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father we, we trust, trust in you. We pray especially for the families who are so fearful, so worried especially that have loved ones in intensive care and they can't go in and touch them or hold them or even say loving things to them. Lord, give them peace which the world cannot give. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father we, we trust, trust in you. And we pray for our whole country. We pray in thanksgiving for the discipline of those who have stayed inside. And we pray in a special way that this crisis might soon be over so that we might gather again in each other's presence and enjoy each other's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we trust in you. God, our Heavenly Father, these are our prayers, those which I spoke out loud, those that are deep in the hearts of each person watching this Mass. We trust that you do hear each prayer and will answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the Liturgy of the Eucharist. My sisters, my brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and those you have given new birth in baptism, that moved by confession of your name and by baptism, they may enjoy unending happiness through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation and at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but especially in this Easter season when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to everlasting light. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are drawn to open to the faithful. By his death is our rising from death, by our resurrection, our rising to life. Therefore, therefore, join, we join the angels and saints in their song of praise. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We stand. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your real risen presence and to serve you. May all of us who share in the body of blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we, may we be welcome to, to into your glory with your Son Jesus, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
anything our imagination can conceive. May we in faith now pray to him the words his son gave us to pray. by the help of your mercy. We may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a gift of that peace among ourselves. Peace. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please kneel for the act of spiritual communion. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Help me to understand and to have a deep belief that you are coming to me in your real presence in a symbolic way. That your purpose in coming to me is to transform me by your grace, transform me, especially on Divine Mercy Sunday, by your forgiveness. Give me the grace, Lord, to try and take care of those things that I've done that would be due to temporal punishment. Even though I'm getting this beautiful gift today, I still I need to repair some things in my life. And especially repair in those areas where I need forgiveness from others and where I need to forgive them. And don't let me keep any grudges. Let me give you my grudges. Let me have the courage to reach out to those who have hurt me and to those whom I have hurt and seek by the help of your grace to have the courage to repair the damage anyway. And so Lord, thank you for coming in today in Holy Communion. I pray not only for my needs, but I also pray for what you want from me. And give me the grace to do that, those little loving things that are going to make a difference in some people's lives. Just as the frontliners are in the hospital, let me be a frontliner of charity and kindness and compassion with all those that I meet. Let me do little acts of mercy, which only you will see, and then prepare me well for when we're free again when we're free at last, when we can join each other at the feast and at our churches and in our neighborhoods. We ask this as always in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. 
We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, help of the sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calumsud, pray for us. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, we look with kindness on your people and grant we pray that those who are pleased to be renewed by your eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incurable, incomparable glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your us. spirit. Now remember, you are, after you receive this plenary indulgence, and you can go to confession this afternoon to the Lord directly, that you are just as you were at your baptism, totally innocent. We say justify. What does that mean? Just as if I never sinned. Just as if I never done that. On this divine mercy, the ocean has covered you, but you're not drowning. Rather, you've been rising above the waters and you're under the protection of the Holy Father. And with that in mind, may Almighty God bless and keep you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dr. Ye will be with you shortly with another beautiful, powerful talk. So our Mass is ended. We stay in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. On behalf of the Feast Mother Bishop family, thank you always, Father Bob. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, we pray for great health and long, long years of ministry. Thank Let's you. do this together. Palapakan natin si Father Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Stand by because we're going to have a few announcements. We're going to do an opening song. Might as well get your coffee, get your food, go to the restroom. Get ready for the Word of God. Preach some more to you. God bless you. See you in a bit. I need co-builders in this place. We don't need to stand here in front. I need you to build the kingdom of God just right where you are. Get nourished here through the feasts.
dearest brothers and sisters, welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia live stream. During this time of uncertainty, we thank you for joining us as we stay connected and stay protected. Together, we prepare, protect, and pray. Here are some health tips that we all need to follow in order to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Number 1. Boost your immune system. It is your number one protection against the virus. Number 2. Practice good personal hygiene. Always wash your hands with soap and water. If that's not available, use hand sanitizer or alcohol disinfectant. Number 3. When in public, protect yourself and others. Social distancing and avoiding crowds are good for you and everyone else. Stay at home and stay safe. Number 4. If you're sick, rest and recover. Refrain from reporting to work if you have symptoms of fever, cough, and colds. Let us work together to keep everybody healthy and virus-free. Share this live stream. Join the Feast Mall of Asia family via Facebook Live. Our big gatherings are suspended until further notice. Your health and safety is important to us. Bless others by sharing this live stream. Stay connected. We encourage our Feast Mall of Asia family to continue our discipleship activities online or via phone calls. Let us continue to be Jesus to each other. Keep track of your sessions by visiting this link or by scanning this QR code. Let's support each other in these trying times. Times may be trying, but you can still be a blessing. Let's continue to support God's work by going digital. Here are the ways that you can give your love offering. Choose between check deposits or bank transfer. Message the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page for more details. For updates and announcements, keep posted through the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page, the Feast Mall of Asia on Instagram, the Feast Mall of Asia hotline, or via email at info at thefeastmallofasia.com. And remember, during this time, it's also important to stay updated with official news outlets and government agencies. Prayer over panic. Faith over fear. We are one family and we have a powerful God. Stay connected, stay protected. Welcome to the Feast Mall of Asia livestream. Brothers and sisters, let us come and worship the name of the God who lived and died for us, is risen. We will sing, we will dance, to the earth echoes the heavens, to sing His praise, to see the other side. Yes, we belong to the light, when the night is at its darkest, just for long.
Hello, Feast Mall of Asia family. Welcome to the family. Welcome home. It's a beautiful Sunday, second Sunday of Easter, and I hope you are doing well. And uh, I've been watching your comments, and uh, please do tell us where you're coming from. Sabihin mo sa amin kung you are coming from whatever part of the world, whatever city you're in. Mag 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 hi and hello naman tayo sa isat isa in this uh, uh, Facebook Live. This is our way to do community now and uh, so be it. <laughs> Wanna say hi to all our first timers. If you're new watching this, welcome to the family. We are the Light of Jesus family and our gatherings are called the Feast and we belong and we are in the Feast Mall of Asia now online. Okay, so uh, salamat sa mga nag-influence sa'yo para makapag-join uh, sa atin through our Feast. And also, want to say hi to our deaf and hard of hearing ministry. We want to say hi to all our regular feasters who go to church through this online platform. Thank God for technology. We can still be together in some way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and uh, as you know me, my name is Dr. Dieter Lubaton. Alam na yan. Gusto ko lang magpot ng doctor's hat on. It's going to be a long, beautiful thing. That we're gonna do today but I wanna you know use this platform also to give uh, good information dissemination especially in this time of pandemic so I'm gonna put my doctor's hat on and I want to update you I want to start with something light and, and, and fun uh, uh, Easter na so my wife and my si Hailey gumawa ng Easter eggs 
Ayan, salute sa ating mga frontliners. Thank you sa office namin na nag-influence gumawa niyan. And ang saya. So, salute sa lahat ng ating mga frontliners. Thank you. And God bless you. And uh, meron pang isa, something light. Nakasabi nitong cartoon na to. With COVID-19, I close your churches. Sabi ng demonyo. Pero sabi ni Jesus, sabi ni God, On the contrary, I just opened one in every home. Ganda. <laughs> Oo nga naman. Lahat na ng bahay, lahat na ng kwarto, lahat na ng gadgets. Pwede na rin simbahan because of technology. And God has His ways to influence us and bring us all to work together for our good. Uh, mayroon akong paalala sa inyong lahat, guys, ha? Always wear your mask when you're going outside. Pero panatilihin din ang pagsuot ng mask kahit nasa loob ng bahay para maiwasan ng kain ng kain. <laughs> Ayan, yeah, yan ang epidemya din ngayon. <laughs> Nagtatabaan ng mga tao. Ayan. Yeah. Just to make it fun. And as you may know, uh, uh, seryoso na, <laughs> as you may know, uh, DOH has updated us that we just uh, broke through the 6,000 number of cases, 6,087. But if you want to take a good look at it, ang ganda in a sense that there are much more recoveries now rather than deaths. And there, there are much more cases of new recoveries and less cases of new deaths. And uh, we are buying ourselves time here. Uh, Uh, ibig sabihin dati mas marami ang deaths at mas onti ang nag-recover ngayon gumaganda na yung mga numero natin we still have a long way to go but we are seeing positive news already and I hope we can focus on that kasi hindi ito madali at hindi siya hindi, hindi lang, it's not just a breeze everybody's suffering, sacrificing having a hard time but let's rejoice and be thankful that we're having good news and positive news And uh, I'd like to share to you some researches coming from our University of the Philippines. And I'm saying this like this one, Modified Community Quarantine Beyond April 30, Analysis and Recommendations. I'm going to share what they say because these, these are very well studied. And these have, uh, are, are using empirical data, meaning we can believe them and meaning there's high chance and probability that they're correct. And so, I want to show you a figure that it says that it takes a longer time now for infected cases to double in number. Dati, from three days now, it needs to have six days to double in number. That means, basically, there is a slowdown of transmission. It doesn't multiply as fast as it used to be. So, hopefully, the linear projection happens where the, the curve flattens. We're seeing signs. that the curve is flattening. Not yet flattened, but it's flattening on its way there. And the reproduction number has lowered to below one. Ito yung figure na to. Be meaning, ECQ is effective in controlling the transmission of disease according to their research. And it, uh, if you compare it to others, like uh, those who are doing well uh, in terms of uh, getting things done, uh, South Korea and Singapore, anything below one, Uh, reproduction number, that's good. We're very careful that there is re reemergence of infections, reinfections in outbreaks in communities, just what's happening in Singapore now. So we cannot be laxed on it. So tayo, so far below one, and we want to keep it that way. And that's one of the reasons also why ECQ has been extended. For the health and safety of everybody. I want to show you another research from our team there in University of the Philippines. Uh, this one shows you forecasts in the Philippines, insights. So it shows you a picture here, uh, a comparison of actual COVID-19 cases of Iran, the country, and the Philippines, showing the effect of ECQ. Si Iran walang quarantine. And you'll see the huge, huge difference in number of infected cases. And uh, tayo, kahit paano, we are keeping it right there. And uh, quarantine has its effects and it helps us all. And I want to show you some projections from the available data that they said. And it shows hope in the flattening of the curve in the coming months. Meaning, there is high good chance. that we can really, really keep this low. We cannot prevent it from infecting a lot more people, but we can keep it low. Meaning we are trying as much as possible to 
only you know uh, uh, get the infection controlled and uh, hopefully the deaths the number of cases and the total active cases will be lower and i want to say this to you coming from this uh managing expectation lang you know when if and when magkaroon ng lifting of uh, ECQ after april 30 my dear friends uh, the, the virus is still there, huh? it doesn't go away. My point is, according to their projections, it could all go up to June, July, meaning that there is a risk of much more infection outside when going outside. And I'm saying this because yung, uh, uh, we gotta prepare ourselves ahead of that. Meaning, tanggapin natin na we are in the situation now, and then we can be proactive and looking ahead, have a foresight, what can we do, how can we adjust to it. Meaning we're not going to wait for the government to tell us what to do. We're not going to wait for whoever to tell us what to do. I want you to know these data now. I want you to know these researches now so that you are informed. Information br could bring about positive action, the right kind of information. And uh, just to expound further, one way to reduce the spread of COVID-19 is decreasing the transmission rate. This is our moving average so far, and it's a calculated one. Kung makikita niya lang, basically, pababa siya. Pababa ang transmission rate. That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're aiming for. And I want to enumerate ano yung mga what we're aiming for, praying for, and hoping for. I want you to be in the right kind of mindset in this kind of uh, situation, in this pandemic all around the world. We want, hopefully, that there is increased, consistent mass testing and accurate reporting of cases. Sana mangyari talaga siya. Dahan-dahan siya na roll out. I hope the, uh, uh, the inertia, the... Ang tawag doon? Yung... Momentum, ayan, magtuloy-tuloy pa na increase consistent mass testing so that we know who are sick agad at hindi na nanguhula kung may sakit siya wala at hindi na siya kumalat-kalat pa. And we want to identify and then isolate the particular infected patients and you take care of them with good, uh, with good care for them. Uh, sorry, dapat adequate health, health facilities yan with enough human and material uh, resources. We're very, uh, kaya po, uh, we welcome uh, uh, all the efforts of the government and the private sector providing PPEs, nagtatayo ng mga special quarantine facilities, so because that's how we do, we do it. We identify and then we isolate para hindi na kumalat yung community infection. And more than that, more than the physical virus, we also repair and hope for the best for our economic impact, that it would be softened, that the, the poor and the marginalized, marginalized will be taken care of, the provision of relief efforts will be continued, sana walang corruption, sana walang gulo, and that's what we're hoping for. I mean, if we're gonna pray specific prayers, these are the prayers that I recommend that we pray for our nation and for our country. We want to have also correct and reliable information dissemination that would influence the right kind of human behavior. This is the reason that why I keep on doing my doctor hats on and using the, this platform. If there are a few hundreds of people who are watching this, influencing your family, sana makuha yung right kind of information. And then you also get to translate it into, sorry Mama Mary, you also get to translate it in actionable behaviors, guys. Ha? And sana, we're hoping, praying for, and aiming for that everyone will cooperate and be disciplined as this continues. There, hopefully, there would be no social unrest. There is a risk of it. There are people who are hungry. There are people uh, who, who are suffering. And I do really hope that it would it, it go into chaos. And that's what we're, we're hoping, praying, and aiming for. Pero hindi lang natin yan ibabato sa langit at bahala ng langit o gumalaw para sa atin. And so, I want to encourage you, what can we do? And I want to show you this, that number one, discipline starts with me. In word and in deed. It starts with me so that I could influence my family and then my community, my country, and then the rest of the humanity. If everybody becomes personally self-responsible for themselves, this would be much, much better for all of us. Can you say that with me? Put your hands to your heart. Yung mga may puso lamang. Wala. Wala ka dyan. <laughs> Sabihin mo sa sarili mo, discipline starts with me. So, hopefully, uh, magka-discipline na tayo. This is a time 
that we could be reawakened to what matters most and personal discipline is the key so that the whole you know it it gets better secondly sharing is caring my dear friends as we help ourselves let's also begin to think of others that's also a sign that you're growing in this crisis growing your character you're not just secure in yourself you're not just thinking about your own food your own shelter your own grocery list your own activities for the day we share we begin to think about those people how about those people who cannot eat how about our you know janitors how about our frontliners how about those people in the poor urban areas and poor rural areas how about those people who don't have jobs now and thirdly i say let's have continue praying and may our prayer become an action prayer in action and as we lift our hands in prayer as we clasp our hands in prayer we also could use these hands to uplift the lives of god's people and uh, meaning mercy ministries meaning donations meaning in your own way alam mo nakakatuwa kasi we've been seeing a lot of news also that you know naaactivate walang sino man ang may pananagutan para sa sarili lamang walang sino man ang namamatay para sa sarili lamang tayong lahat ay may pananagutan sa isa't isa eh, yun ang maganda nakikita natin news ngayon nagbabayanihan nagtutulungan tayo lahat and uh, we see we see people who doing it uh, Uh, we see people feeding uh, our frontliners, feeding our hospital people. People are donating PPEs. People are, you know, doing also much social entrepreneurship. Or up, may kilala tayo na nagtatayo ng mga quarantine facilities ng tent pero maayos. Ang ganda. And uh, sa atin in our feast, we we got some feasters who are very very notable. And one of them is this. Uh, we we have. We have uh, we, we we are connected with uh, uh, feasters who who, uh, who are running their companies and these these guys donated so much uh, tissue and uh, uh, paper towels sa uh, PGH saka sa Justice Jose Abad Santos General Hospital those are public hospitals and guys malit na bagay kung sa sabihin pero ang ganda niyan kasi ginagamit yan sa paglinis ng surfaces Uh, disposable sa uh, para yung after hand washing hindi kabasa I'm so thankful that we have people in our feasts who are doing this uh, meron din tayong uh, uh, people are donating uh, PPEs uh, to PGH I'm grateful that uh, I, I I have leaders in our company who put together their you know their stuff their their uh, makakaya and then we delivered the PPE donation to PGH so ang ganda that companies are doing such uh, things like this and uh, one more thing uh, isa sa isa pa sa mga notable na nakikita ko na efforts ay ang ating deaf and hard of hearing ministry alam mo sila nakausap ko ang uh, oh, the, the the president of the interpreter society of the Philippines are with, are with us in the peaceful location tapos makikita mo na nung una, sobrang nagkakagod yung community nila. Bakit? Kasi hindi nila maintindihan yung news. But they put their efforts together. Nag-shoot sila ng videos. Imagine mo, susundan mo si Noli De Castro. O susundan mo si Karen Davila. O kung sino man. Sino ba ang mga GM, GM eh? Si Mike Enrique, si Athena Imperial. Susundan nila. Pero kailangan may FSL, may Filipino Sign Language Interpreters. Why? Because there's a community in the Philippines who don't know what's going on. And I want to honor these guys because uh, they, they, they really care for people. This is prayer in action. This is, this is sharing is caring. At they nagpupuyat yung mga yan and they mount up so much effort. And uh, if you wish to donate to them, there's also a line here posted that you can you can do, donate to them. And we also have donated to them also in some way. So I, I'm happy that we, I'm, I'm, I get to see a lot of uh, prayer in action, bring about the good stuff in us. And I also want to use this platform already this time to update you of our move about the Feast Little Acts of Love. Our donation update is we are able to come up with 170,000 already and we're able to give away 150 of that plus 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 and we're able to feed 170 families 
uh, in Tondo, Manila, Poorest of the Poor. We're partnering with the Alay ng Puso, uh, Missionaries of Charity. Alam mo, I, I'm thankful for you, dear family, because we just we just targeted 100. We were able to give 170 families food for a week. And that's beautiful. And we're gonna continue this, my dear friends, because ang mga taong binigyan natin, magugutom ulit yan. At uh, araw-araw pa rin silang kumakain. And, you know, ngayon, may, may balita kahapon that nagkaroon ng sunog sa tundo. So imagine how many people will be much more displaced and would be needing our help. And so, I am committing with you as your builder. We're gonna continue this. I'll show you what we've done before. I know I have updated this before in the worship night, but I want to update you here in our feast that here's some pictures. Well, tell you the story. We were able to mount up uh, an effort where we were able to buy the foods for delivery, food for delivery. And we're thankful for the logistic partners that we have. And nagtulungan po talaga lahat. There may isang truck na uh, nilagyan. And then we were able to send this to this community. Ito yung picture ng community, ng mahirap na community sa, sa Delpan, Tondo. Ayan ang, ayan ang itsura ng barong-barong nila. And then ito naman ang, ang itsura ng Alay ng Puso, Missionaries of Charity. We're thankful for them that we got to partner and they have the mechanisms, the people, to make sure that the donations that we have would really go to the poorest among the poor. And thank you, dear sisters, the missionaries of charities. And uh, we're going to continue this. I want to show you some pictures. Ha? Uh, alam mo, pakita mo yung pictures ng, uh, ng mga picture ng mga tao na nakamiti, na natutuwa. Uh, if you look at their faces, I'm really moved when I saw their faces with them. How happy they are to receive rice and some goods. So I realized, pwede ko silang pagdasal, pero pwede na natin silang tulungan in our own physical way. I'll tell you more about it later, how we can give. Um, so here, here's a, I want to encourage you to continue this with us. We're going to mount up an effort this week where we can give so much more. For every 700 pesos, we get to feed a family of five. So uh, my wife and I are committing in this week, we're going to commit 10 families to feed. We're targeting 200 now. So I'm calling everybody there. Maybe we can put a prayer into action. I'm, I'm encouraging you as your friend, your builder, whoever you think of me. But if there are people out there who's willing to feed five, uh, to feed people, feed a family of five for a week, for just 700 bucks, come and, and, and donate and uh, we'll show you, we'll update you next week. One last thing, uh, uh, as a doctor, I want you to, and as a holistic uh, preacher and doctor, I want to show you the phases of hope, please, in, a, in uncertain times. And I want to show you that sa umpisa, there is a you know huge emotional response that we're hopeful but of course when uncertain times coming I may doubt and then we are not sure what's happening we're pretty sure na parang oh my goodness lord what has what's happening and then you come to a point that you're completely and utterly hopeless and then when you reach rock bottom eventually there's no way but up and then our eyes become open to a bigger picture and then together we move from fear to faith and love and then hope is written. I am saying wherever you are in this phase of hope, it's okay. But I want you to go to the other side. Don't remain in the rock bottom. Uh, move to the other side and eventually our hope is written. I can say that because the hope, our hope is in the Lord. And our hope does not disappoint. If He made heaven and earth, He He did make heaven and earth. And He can get us through this definitely. And so, uh, yeah, ako personally, my eyes are being open to the bigger picture now. Kita ko yung kahirapan ng mga tao, yung takot ng mga tao. It becomes more real and surreal to me. 
and 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 I'm hopeful for the future. I'm hopeful for the future. So I hope you like our doctor's update today, and I'm gonna putting on my preacher's hat now. And uh, we're moving forward with our best preaching ever, our lessons and inspiration from the book of Matthew. And welcome here to the top four, number four of our series. And uh, our talk today is about more than a makeover. Yeah, <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong, ha? okay naman ang makeovers. They're fun, They and at various times, nakakabago ng buhay. Diba? Nakakita ka ng mga tao nag-makeover, parang wow! Sino yun? Diba? Revamping your appearance, physical appearance, is very useful for you. But sadly, I want to tell you that sometimes makeovers are not enough. Because our core problem is not just the physical appearance. Our, go, our problem goes deeper than the skin. We need a heart makeover. We have a... We have a heart problem, not just a physical appearance problem. And so today, I'd, I'd like to preach on the message. Uh, one big message today is God is after your heart. Can you say that? God is after your heart. Let's pray our Novena prayer to abundance and to God's love in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's pray our favorite prayer in the feast. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. And today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessing the world, I am because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Hold up your Bibles and sing it together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Speak to us, Lord. We're ready to listen to you. God is after your heart. And uh, we go still in our Matthew chapter 5. I want you to go there. And uh, 17. Matthew 5 verse 17. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will appear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be great, will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, Unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We pray that the Spirit would guide us in our discussion today. We pray that God opens up our hearts, transform our lives through His Word today. And may the seed that God has planted in our hearts today will bear fruit, be cultivated, be watered daily. Put your hands to your heart and pray this prayer with me. Say this, Jesus, change my heart. May it be more like you. Transform my life. Make me a new person. Change my desires. I want to follow you. Not because it's your law, but because I love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Isang malaking bagsak para kay Lord. 
Ayan, sariling sikap. Mahirap talaga pag hindi ko kayo nakikita. <laughs> Uh, I hope that you're commenting and I hope that you're there. Can you let me know that you're there? Could you comment and uh, be active in our participation? Pinapanood ko yung mga comments ninyo. Oh, yeah, God is after your own heart. Let me tell you a story. Uh, I learned the piano when I was seven years old. Okay? Because my mom said so. Uh, all of us, kaming pito kaming magkakapatid, Uh, there is one point in our childhood that we have to learn the piano. And uh, ito, medyo maganda, the, the piano teacher comes at home uh, with this book. Ito yung itsura ng libro. Ito yung itsura ko. Oh, hindi ako yan, pero ganyan ang itsura ko. Man. Yung may, may sinusundan, tapos may piano teacher dyan na nagbibisit, tapos may assignment ka sa susunod. Tapos alam mo, ito yung itsura nung, uh, ni-research ko talaga, naalala ko eh, nung 7 years old ako, ito yung, ito yung itsura nung uh, libro. Ayan, si John Thompson. Ay, may mga nakaka-relate ba dyan sa akin? <laughs> Alam mo, ito yung mga picture ng mga favorite ko doon. Alam mo, hindi ko siya, hindi ako nagbabasa ng, ng, hindi ako magaling magbasa ng nota. Ang ginagawa ko, pinapanood ko yung teacher ko gawin, tapos minememorize ko. Eh kasi kailangan ko lang gawin eh. Kailangan ko lang i-return demonstration. So, swans on the lake. kita ko dyan, Little Spring Song uh, uh, <laughs> uh, meron dun, you know, the tires of woodpecker uh, pahirap lang, pahirap yan pag lumalayo na, long long ago childhood ko. <laughs> Pero, I was, parang pinapamemorize lang, kailangan ko lang gawin. I didn't understand what it's for. So, because my mom said so, I just learned it. Pero, nung natigil yung mga piano lessons, natigil din yung pag-piano ko. Kasi, parang wala naman eh. I stopped playing as well. But one remarkable, beautiful thing happened when I became 13 years old. na kasama ako na sa youth ministry ng bukas loob sa Diyos. And my brothers and sisters were there already. And then doon, nag-worship songs kami ng mga 12, 15 songs at least on a Saturday. Yun talaga. So, and, 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 and uh, my heart become, became so in love with Christ. I fell in love with God. And, and a big influence is from praise music. I sing, well, I do. Basta, I love praise music and uh, because uh, I was feeling the itch of, you know, I want more praise music, I want more praise music. I, the only instrument at home is the piano. And so, I, with the help of my sister, si Ate Chichi, kung nanonood ka, I asked my sister, who's the one playing for the youth ministry back then? Sabi ko, Ate, turuan mo naman ako ulit ng piano. I want to learn the piano again. And she taught me with a simple as Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Simpleng, simpleng ganon. Okay, ah. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let the glory be over all the earth. Ayan, yung mga ganong mga kanta. Sinimplehan lang nung una. And then, araw-araw, hanggang linggo-linggo, hanggang buwan-buwan, almost for how many years, I, I never stopped. Why? Because I did not do it because my mom said so. But because I said so. Because I, may kusa, may sarili kong gusto. And uh, because of playing music, I became the music ministry head in our youth ministry. Eventually, moved to the feast. Sorry, and then again, okay, musical director. And now, and now, as a preacher, I would tell you that I have big, big roots because of this music uh, experience in my life. I, the way I preach, the way I am a doctor now, it's it, there's a huge, huge roots of the heart for people, the heart for God is because of the music influence in me. 
And the difference from the 7-year-old Didoy and the 13-year-old Didoy, the 7-year-old Didoy played the piano because his mom told him to. The 13-year-old Didoy played the piano because he wanted to. Didoy at 7 years old was playing with his hands. But Didoy at 13 years old, moving forward, was playing with his heart. And if you're gonna ask me, are there any regrets when I started seven at seven years old? No, because those basics were important. The foundation at seven years old gave me the opportunity to build on it at 13 years old. And so I wanna take this point, Mama, thank you for investing in me and us as a family. Uh, thank you na uh, hinulit mo kami at naggumastos ka para sa piano lessons namin. And thank you Ate Chichi for teaching me patient, uh, patiently teaching me the piano because this one, the playing the piano has you know opened up my heart and uh, it nagsanga-sanga na siya afterwards. I'm saying this illustration because isn't this the same story in our spiritual life? Once upon a time, someone taught you to follow God. Someone, someone taught you to obey the Ten Commandments. Someone taught you to go to Mass every day, pray the Rosary, pray the Angelus. And someone taught you to read the Bible because the Bible is the basic instructions before leaving earth. So it was ma mainly your manual how to live. And at that time, especially in the early times, maybe you didn't appreciate it too much. Siguro napaka, you know, you followed God because you had to. Because, because your mother said so. Because, you know, you were afraid that God might punish you or God might be angry at you if you don't. Or He will send you to hell. Alam mo, dito rin sa feast, diba? Yung, ito yung mga dahil nag attend ka ng feast, dahil sabi lang ng crush mo, dahil na doon ng crush mo. O dahil, diba, sabi nga nila, uh, Simba dates, yeah. <laughs> o kaya dahil ang kulit talaga ng asawa mo, hindi ka tumakatampana ng asawa mo, and then you really go. O dahil you go to the feast, dahil may kape at pandesal do. <laughs> o dahil pogi yung preacher. Si Brother Dave Regala, ha, diba? <laughs> this was like, kung ganito ang thinking, this was like the seven-year-old dito. But at a certain point, something amazing happened. God went after your heart and you experience this unconditional love and then your life changed you sing ano mo alam mo yung pag na-experience mo na yung Panginoon heart to heart something changes in you and then kumakanta ka na ng ano eh Who am I with the Lord of all the earth who care to know my name care to feel my hurt medyo may ganun ka ng feeling kay Lord hindi na siya yung parang Diyos lang high up above sa trono niya no it becomes more personal and all of a sudden you want to love him back not because you have to but because you want to this one is like the 13 year old Didoy playing with his heart not just with his hands my dear friends God went after your heart God went after your heart and this brings us to our key passage for today. This is uh, this is uh, correcting a misunderstanding. So again, from Matthew 5, verse 17. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. Jesus said this because there was a huge misunderstanding. A lot of a lot of people, uh, especially the religious leaders of his time, believed that you know Jesus was throwing away the law and the prophets and uh, uh, parang hindi sinusunod naman ni Lord or parang wala ang kwenta yan. No, 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 no. But, but, but by the way, what are the law and the prophets? I want to you know, teach you further that there are two foundations where there are enta the entire religion of Judaism, Hebrew, uh, uh, the, uh, the culture there, the religion that rested upon. Dalawa. Number one, the Torah and second, the prophets. So these are the two pillars of Jerusalem. The first one, the Torah. Whenever Jesus said the word, Lo, He was referring to the Torah. And this Torah is the first five books of the Bible. We call it Pentateuch. That's why first five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And we're also familiar with the Ten Commandments. But more than those, that, uh, uh, but aside from that ten, the religious beliefs of Judaism says that there are 603 more laws coming from this Torah for a grand total of 613 laws. 
ang dami and memorize nila yon by heart and that's what Torah is telling you what the law is the prophets naman uh, whenever Jesus said prophets he was talking about the prophets in the Old Testament and there were four major prophets namely Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel and uh, there were 12 other minor ones namely Hosea, <laughs> Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi and uh, you know at least meron tayong idea what's going on here and why did they think Jesus was throwing away the Torah or not following the prophets to the religious leader, leaders it seemed that like Jesus was scrapping the law and for example stories one Sabbath day the uh, Sabbath means supposed to be rest in their religion, in their culture. The apostles were walking in the field, and when they got hungry, they started picking the grain. It's bawal yon sa batas nila, and the religious leaders saw this, and they were horrified. Nganga talaga sila, and if Jesus, you know, they were saying, if Jesus was a real holy man, he could allow his, but why, why does he allow his barakada to do this on his baksak on the Sabbath? Bawal to! Torah prohibited all the work, including picking grain. As simple as picking grain. Bawal yun sa relihiyon nila. And then, alam mo, kulit din ni Jesus eh. A few hours after, on the same Sabbath, a, a man came up to Jesus with a deformed hand. Uh, uh, and, and Jesus healed him on the spot and again the pharisees were very ha angry why didn't you you know why did jesus heal him not on a monday or a wednesday or a friday why does it have to be on a saturday na bawal gumawa ng kahit anong trabaho Baje, ba ano ba yan bakit naman kasi pwede naman ibang araw bakit sabado ba talaga hindi ka namin maintindihan iba si jesus but perhaps the most scandalous thing that Jesus did was his choice of friends. Alam mo, one day, Jesus had a meal in Matthew's house. Yes, Matthew, the one who wrote our Gospels. We've been studying his Gospels for four months. But he was a tax collector. And he was considered a very sinful man. And the story says this in Matthew 9 verse 10. Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners bahala ka na kung mga sinners na yun. but for sure ayaw ng mga religious leaders doon but when the Pharisees saw this they asked his disciples why does your teacher eat with such scum when Jesus heard this he said healthy people don't need a doctor sick people do. Oh, di ba? <laughs> Imagine with me, these were not just tax collectors, you know, and prostitutes and drunkards, lahat ng mga mga kasalanan that they considered at that time. Chances were very high that these guys also broke other laws, the different 613 laws, higher chances that they really, really break laws. For example, uh, what if nagpatlock sila sa dinner, may nagdala ng crispy pata, may nagdala ng pork barbecue, may nagdala, may nagdala ng uh, buttered shrimp. All of those food that I mentioned, bawal ang pork, bawal yung mga ganong particular food against the Torah. <laughs> Literally, here was why people thought Jesus was abolishing the law. He befriended the lawbreakers. He were among the lawbreakers. He, he befriended them. Tandaan natin tong story na to because I'm gonna go back to the end of this talk, ha? Uh, I'm gonna go back to this. So, in another point of view, there is really some misunderstanding. Matthew wrote his gospel around 40 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And Bible scholars believe that the, misunder the misunderstanding that Jesus came to abolish the law continued on even 40 years after because by that time here's what's happening non-jews meaning yung mga hindi nila kakultura doon sa bansa nila were already joining their house churches by the multitude early on here's what happened early on almost all christians christ followers were jews but one day foreigners came knocking on the door of these churches 
and they wanted to follow Jesus too. There was also a great commission to go to the ends of the earth. First, it was a small number, then it grew and grew and became a swarm of people. Greeks, Romans, Ethiopians, Egyptians, they wanted to follow Jesus. Now, here's the problem. They love Jesus, but in the Jewish culture, circumcision? No way. They hated the idea. If you are not part of the Jewish religion and then it's a circumcised God just to follow Jesus, no way. These Gentile Christians, ang tawag sa non-Jews are Gentiles. These Gentile Christians also wanted to keep eating their pork chop, their pork barbecue, their chili crab, and their calamares. And all of these were against the Torah, uh, the, the pillar of Judaism. And uh, meron pa nga, they wanted to uh, wear, you know, a mix of cotton and polyester. But according to the Torah, you cannot wear blended fabric. So, and dami kasing laws. And daming laws. And so the huge question in the minds of the Jewish Christians were, how can these Gentiles, these foreigners follow Jesus but not the Torah? And so, here comes Jesus clearing the misunderstanding. Let's keep reading our passage, okay? So, from Matthew 5, <clears throat> Matthew 5, verse 17 to 20, nandito na tayo sa, you know, ulit. Uh, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. There is a purpose. Everybody say purpose. There's a purpose why the laws are there. Though I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until, everybody say until. Until. Until its purpose is achieved. And so if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But here's the kicker. Further on, sabi, but I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. These Pharisees were Bible professors, Bible scholars. They memorized the Torah, 613 laws that they could follow them strictly to the letter, crossing the T's, uh, uh, dotting the I's, Imagine mo, Miss Min Chin. <laughs> May maisip ako. <laughs> Imagine mo. So they were supposed to be the holiest people in town. And yet Jesus said, if you're just gonna be like them, you're not yet part of my kingdom. You're not yet following your king. I am not your king. Jesus is telling us, you've got to be better than these Pharisees. These Pharisees won't enter the kingdom in the same way. Because they follow the law only only they you know they cannot say you know it like the seven year old dida you're you're just playing the piano because you're told you you are told to do so god wants you to be like 13 year old child that says i want to follow the law because i want to not because i have to and speaking of piano playing when you first learn to play you memorize the notes and the chords, you do the scales. It's not fun. Marami mga access, marami exercises, marami mong kailangan tandaan. It's not easy. But after using it, doing it consistently for a long period of time, you start playing not from the head, but from the heart. Not just from the heart, the hand, but also with the heart involved. You never forget the notes, the chords, the lessons. But you still follow it. But you go beyond playing with the skillful hands. You play with a soulful heart. And God is after your heart, not just your head, not just your hands. I hope you're getting this. Here's another illustration. Why do people go to school? The answer, to learn to live in the real world. Para matuto, to tumayo sa sarili niya. At makatulong sa bansa, sa tao, sa pamilya. School has a purpose in the same way that the Torah had a purpose. Thus, you don't stay in school forever. May kilala ako. <laughs> Totong story ito. Sabi niya, uh, tinanong ko, ano, anong, paano, anong, nung graduate ka, may honors ka ba? Sabi niya, magna ako sa college. Bro, magna ako. ako. Wow, galing mo naman. Sabi niya, magna nine years na ako sa college. Di pa ako tapos. <laughs> 
at a certain point, you need to graduate and you need to start working. You need to contribute to society. You need to stand up on your own. And let me define the law to you. The law is a school of the heart whose purpose is to teach people to follow God in the world. But at a certain time, you graduate from it. Even the prophets in the Old Testament knew the law was not enough. Jeremiah, I want you to go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah spoke about how God was going to make a new covenant between him and his people. I want you to go to Jeremiah 31, verse 31, verse 31 to 33. It says, The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant. Though I love them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But, everybody say but. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. My friends, God is after your heart. Remember the seven-year-old Dido who played the piano with his hands while the 13-year-old Dido played the piano with his heart. And that's the difference between the old covenant to the new covenant. The old covenant says it's about duty. The new covenant says it's about devotion. There's a huge, huge difference when you do things out of duty rather than do things out of devotion. For example, in marriage, if you just do things out of duty, it wouldn't last. You will provide, you will uh, spend time, spend energy. Pero kung walang devotion, kung walang puso, just doing what you're supposed to do, it wouldn't it wouldn't be nice if you're you're raising the kid because you just have to raise the kid at walang heart into it the kids will not have a good parenting from you and they will not grow up so well dapat may puso sana when you love your parents you yung nagtutulong ka sumusuporta ka sa parents ba eh kasi tinulungan niya ako nung bata ako pero kung walang pagmamahal doon it wouldn't be the same thing it wouldn't be nice when you're working in your company you're working because because that's just my job description i'm just gonna be basically doing this and then after five tapos na and then bahala na pag hindi matapos next week matapos na i mean do things at work out of duty or out of devotion when you're working on your business you're doing it because of just duty to your customer to your employees or because it's your devotion serving in church Serving in the feast, you're doing it because of duty or are you doing it because of devotion? There's a big, big difference with helping others, doing it because of duty or doing it because of devotion. Yeah, staying at home in quarantine. You're staying at home, bored na bored ka na, inis na inis ka na because, eh, kailangan eh, baka mahuli ako ng tano. Well, because you're, you are staying put at home because that's the most loving thing to do for everyone now, for the greater good. New covenant. We are new covenant people. We do things because of love, because of heart, because of devotion. Not because of our hands and our and our heads only. In the later part, let me move forward. In the later part of Matthew's gospel, Jesus was asked a trick question. You can go to Matthew 22, verse 35 to 36. <clears throat> they tried na hulihin si Jesus. Matthew 22, verse 35 to 36. It says, One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Oh, it was a trap. Yun yung mga kalaban niya wanted to pick one. They wanted Jesus to highlight one law out of the 613 laws and elevate it as more important than others. And if he did, there was going to be a long, long <clears throat> discussion. And if he made a mistake, they were trying to catch Jesus to make a mistake. And if he makes some mistakes, boom! That's when he will condemn him and, you know, put him in the court for blasphemy. 
mga abanger sila dito. But Jesus is Jesus. He did not just pick, you know, He did not pick any of the 613 laws. Instead, He picked their daily prayer, the Shema, and said, uh, from Matthew 27, 37 to 40, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these new on these two commandments. Imagine what the pillars of Judaism ginano ni Jesus and say the entire law says you love the Lord your God and then you love your neighbor. Beautiful. At the end of the day, the laws, the 613 laws that they have was about loving God and loving others. It was a heart issue. That's why I want to tell you, my friend, God is after your heart. But how can you love God? Let's follow Jesus. Jesus' methodology of discipleship, He uses the same approach over and over again in changing people. He loves them. He loves them. And let me bring you back to the controversial meal in Matthew's house. No Jewish religious leader would ever do what Jesus did. Instead, they did the very opposite. The religious leaders at that time, they condemned those sinners to hell. They, they wouldn't speak to them. They... They, they abhor them, but not Jesus. Jesus, He befriended them. He laughed with them. He lived with them. He dined with them. He loved them. And through His love, they changed. How do I know? The writer of the gospel was a tax collector, experienced God's love. And now, that's why we have this gospel. Because His heart changed. Why? Because Jesus loved Him. The truth is this. Only love changes us. Because only love can reach the depths of our hearts. The greatest journey is from head to heart. The only, only love would really change a person. Without the motivation of, of the heart, we're gonna be like robots. Note that the meal in Matthew's house was not an isolated event. Jesus kept throwing these parties of forgiveness, parties of love so often that the Pharisees would call him a glutton and a drunkard. Uh, sino pa bang idea nun si Zacchaeus? Uh, dami, daming kwento that Jesus dined, loved, lived. My, wow. And to this day, I want to say this to you, it wasn't just in Jesus' time. To this day, Jesus is still throwing these parties of forgiveness and love. And you know what it's called? It's called the Eucharist. <laughs> And uh, a reflection question by my friend. Do you obey God out of law? Or do we obey God out of love? If you still obey God out of law, allow Him to love you. Allow Him to forgive you. Allow Him to go after your heart. Nagsisimba tayo, we go to Mass because we have to. Or maybe we can graduate to nagsisimba tayo because we want to. Because we know we, we're gonna reach God some more. God is after your own heart. I want to say that to you, my friend. God is after your own heart. God is after your heart. I wanna, I wanna end with a very personal note. Um, yeah, um, as I've said earlier, Uh, what's my biggest lesson in the 30 days of ECQ? More than a month of ECQ. Grabe! Uh, <laughs> my, my biggest lesson, I can't do not. My biggest lesson is growing my heart. You know, I realize how 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 good kahit pa paano ang pamumuhay namin. Hindi kami nagugutom. May opportunity kami to, to live in a good house. We're, we're grateful. And my biggest lesson is I want to grow my heart to not just securing myself, my wife, my kids, and my families. Pero yung heart ko goes to those people that nagkakasakit, namamatayan, namamatay. 
yung mga taong na uh, I get, yun nagkukonsulta sa akin online, dalawa lang sila makausap ng doktor, takot na takot na yung yung mga kakilala ko na nawala ng trabaho kasi wala na yung mga some of the flight attendant friends that we have here in the feast, yung iba na you know, per no work, no pay kung walang gig, walang pera eh may mga pamilya yun may mga pangarap yun, may mga binabayakan sila You know, my heart really goes for them, and uh, that's why I'm really moved into action. That uh, I'm not just gonna, you know, gonna preach this message. I want to rally us all that we we're gonna we're gonna do something for the poor. We're gonna we're, we're have a hotline where people can talk to, people can ask uh, help, uh, and we we're mounting up an effort that we're gonna feed the poor because. Uh, It would be sad when Jesus, God, sees your heart and it's just about you. How about we ask God to teach us to love just like Him? At the risk of being not approved by the religious leaders, at the risk of getting, getting, you know, maligned, abused, eventually, The, that's the meaning of the cross. <laughs> But Jesus loved anyway. At the midst of persecution, Jesus loved anyway. And so, I hope that when God looks into your heart, it wouldn't be just all about you. But there will be people there, your family, wife, husband, kids, But don't just keep it there. Grow your heart. Think of others who may be in need. Speaking of a song of the piano, natuto ako magpiano. Tapos natuto rin ako kumanta at konte. <laughs> natuto ako gumawa ng kanta. I wanna offer a song like this. Let it be a reflection. Uh, I wrote this when I had I was going through a difficult time. Hirapan ako magmahal sa sa ibang tao. And this is my prayer and I turned it into song. Just like you 
as I have loved you. This is my commandment, I give it to you. Love one another as I have loved you. This is my commandment, I give it to you. respond to God now. Maging personal tayo kay Lord eh? and offer up our hearts to Him. As God is reaching out to us after our hearts, we're right here responding to God and saying, Lord, here I am. Take me. Take my heart. Change my heart, oh God. me, transform me, make me more like you. This is our prayer as we sing. This is my desire to I 
prayers of our hearts, the desires of our hearts, the sins of our hearts, all of us, we pray that as we, as we are held by you, you will secure us, you will heal us, you will renew us. I speak restoration, I speak abundance, I speak peace. Receive God's love today. We receive your love today. And it's new every morning. We receive our new hearts molded after you. We receive. We receive your grace. We receive your blessings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. session and also our preaching today. I hope that you would let God be after your heart and respond with your heart as well uh, to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Bob. <laughs> thank you, Mahi. I want to say thank you to all of you who watched here, joined us online, and we have a few announcements with you. Uh, Mahi, can you help us with our announcements? With our announcements? Oh, uh, we, as mentioned, uh, uh, we continue with our face little acts of love, my dear friends. And this is the plan. We will still continue 700 pesos per family, targeting 200 families this uh, coming week. And uh, we were able to source a new way where what we could give to them. May box na ganito ang itsura. And then ang loob nito ay ganito. Fresh food, rice, gulay. Uh, and then some reading materials from uh, our feast. And you know what this means? This is uh, partnering with uh, a feast, Bulacan. They are able to source it from the farmers, fisher folk through the feast. We're able to feed the families of Tondo. And that's a win, win, win situation from everybody. And this is us, you know, uh, us, God, uh, af, uh, blah, blah, blah. this is us men and women after God's own heart. So I want to unleash the generosity in our family. I challenge us to, to at least reach our target of 200 families that we can feed the poor today. Our Tondo families are really needing that support from all of us. And uh, I, I do hope that you could support in your own simple way. Uh, this is how you can give online and uh, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, please, please do. Uh, let, this is one way that our prayers are brought into action. We are helping people by staying home and by also allowing that we that we get to feed people this way. So thank you so much to all our eye givers in the house, to all our generous givers, our regular givers. Thank you so much. We want to continue the cycle of blessing. And as we receive, we give. And as we receive and as we give. And uh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, 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 meron tayo mga pagkakataon pa na our community doesn't end on a Sunday. By this coming week, we're gonna start something new. Sa, sa Tuesday, magkakaroon tayo ng parang talk show. Ang tawag natin dyan, Tanungan Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, sisimulan ng ating uh, leadership team sa Mall of Asia sa Tuesday. Batuhan tayo ng mga tanong, kwentuhan, kulitan, praktikalan. Uh, kulitan lang, kamustahan, yan, gagawin natin yan sa Tuesday night. Ano oras? 8.30 ng gabi. <laughs> Hala, so, uh, magkita-kita tayo doon, hangouts natin yan. Tapos sa uh, Thursday naman, uh, uh, sa Thursday naman, merong How to Huwebes. Uh, ito mga praktikalan, paano ba magupit in the time of ECQ? Paano magluto ng mga masasarap na pagkain? Uh, paano maging very effective ang work from home para sa iyo? So, yung mga ganong practical na bagay. And then may worship night na naman ng Sabado. And then may feast naman ng Sunday. Why are we doing this? Because we want to connect with you. And we want our servants to serve. We want to feed people in spiritual, emotional, relational nourishment. And that's a beautiful thing that we can do together. Okay? So, magkita kita tayo sa Tanong on Tuesdays. Saka sa How to Huwebes. And then Worship Night by the Worship Team na by Saturday. 
And then I'll see you and Brother Dave <laughs> by Sunday next week. So it's going to be an amazing time. And as we go through that week, we're going to deliver our hashtag, The Feast's Little Acts of Love, our way to help the poor in this time of need. And I hope that you could commit with me. Ha? I hope you're there. I know you're listening. You're watching. Let's unleash generosity to one another, to our church today. So this is again, Brother Didoy Lobaton with my little girl, si Haley. Bye! Say thank you, everybody. Say we love you. We love you, Frankie. Say Abu. I love you, everybody. God bless you. See you again. Thank you, Father Bob. Okay. <laughs>